Uh, I'm Ben. Uh, I work for GitLab, uh, and I work on the Prometheus team. Uh, I used to be a Google SRE, and then uh, I'm mostly retired from that, and I just work on the, the monitoring code now. Uh, GitLab pays me, uh, pays me to do that. And so, yeah, uh, GitLab is a ridiculously transparent company. Uh, we, uh, you know, I had some nice talks with the Grafana folks about they also want to be a, a, a transparent company. I think it's really great. Uh, when GitLab has a database outage and we delete everything, uh, we live stream the recovery on YouTube. It's what? <laughs> um, and uh, it's the same thing with our metrics. Uh, we run Prometheus, and uh, all, of our, uh, all of our Prometheus metrics are available uh, on a public Grafana dashboard, and it's just crazy. So yeah, um, uh, the first thing we want to talk about is, yeah, we use Prometheus. Uh, it, uh, it allows us to monitor everything in our production environment. Uh, we had a bit of InfluxDB use for a while, but uh, is, it, is it not working? There we go. How's that? Um, and and it was a really great way to like monitor everything. Uh, it gives us alerts. It gives us performance data. Um, and yeah, we know, we all know about Prometheus now. Uh, and yeah, but we're we're not here to talk about Prometheus. We're here to talk about Grafana. And uh, you know, even before I started, uh, Git uh, GitLab was using Grafana, and we used it internally. Uh, but part of our transparency thing is we we wanted to be able to show our internal performance metrics uh, to all of our users and all of our customers. Uh, and so in the beginning, we set up a, uh, 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 a, uh, a public version of our dashboards. And we just used a simple synchronization Ruby script that would take the use the internal Grafana API, uh, dump all the dashboards, and then load them into the, the public-facing one. And so now we had two independent uh, Grafana servers, one with our internal authentication and one with no authentication. And that worked pretty well. It gave us all the, the ability to synchronize dashboards. And if you want, the, the code for this uh, dashboard is up there, and you can just copy it. It's really ugly, simple Ruby. Um, but yeah, now now we have users. And users just love to pound on, on, on our dashboards, especially when we have database outages and somebody posts a link to a dashboard uh, uh, on Hacker News, and or even more fun, uh, a very large corporation buys our biggest competitor, and there's a graph in our dashboard somewhere that shows the uh, the number of imports that happen from from our competitor to in, into our thing, and that dashboard just gets completely slammed. So, what do I do? You know, what can we do to improve the the performance of our public dashboards? Um, and of course, uh, because of course, in the beginning, our pu uh, in order to isolate our public dashboards. Uh, we set up. Uh, we had our internal Prometheus, and that worked great. And then we had our external Prometheus. Is it still up? Oh, why? Why did I lose signal? There we go. Yay! Um, uh, we had our internal Prometheus, and then we ha uh, we had an external Prometheus that used the Federation endpoint to scrape all the data over. And of course, if anybody's ever done that, you know it doesn't work very well, it doesn't scale very well, and it kind of sucked. So we ended up saying, OK, we're, that's too slow, that doesn't work. Then we, instead of doing that, we just set up uh, another Prometheus replica, because we already had an HA pair. So then we added a third Prometheus that would scrape the same targets. And now we had another replica. And that worked pretty well until that Prometheus got too big. And you know we did the typical thing that you do to, to scale Prometheus is we started some horizontal sharding. And now we have our internal main Prometheus and an internal application Prometheus. Uh, and now, now we're getting more complicated. And this is getting really annoying. So uh, uh, the, the next thing we introduced was the Thanos query layer. So now. We have the the uh, Thanos is a uh, provides our uh, a, a super simple single pane of glass to query all these Prometheus servers, um, and we also started the, uh, uh, limiting the queries uh, because we were now using direct access to our internal Prometheus servers, and so we had to set uh, uh, significantly shorter query timeouts to avoid abuse. Um, uh, and but of course that. 
that's still not super great because people could still DDoS our Prometheus servers with super long and, and complicated queries, and it would just use up all the memory and, and um the internal Prometheus. So um, uh, thankfully, in uh, Prometheus 2.5, they, we, they introduced the, the concept of a max sample per query, and the default is like 50 million samples per query, so, and we cut that down to 10, and this significantly reduces the, the, uh, the damage that a, a bad query can do to a Prometheus server. Uh, uh, next up is cardinality. Yeah, there's, there's things that can go wrong. Um, uh, we uh, we had a uh, a really neat internal debugging feature for uh, people running the the GitLab development kit, building GitLab, wanting to get more detailed data out of the out of their or or small GitLab installs, want to get more detailed information, and uh, we added a, a feature flag that was is off by default that allows you to get uh, metrics on a per project basis. So every every user, every group, every project, so like every Git repo, you could get metrics on it and get that's a nice useful label. But not on a public server where we're hosting people's private data and now uh, now you could leak that into your metrics and you can you end up getting private information and labels. And uh, we uh, uh, an uh, an overeager developer turned that on feature flag on and started and number one it was a huge cardinality explosion because you know we have millions of repos on on GitLab.com and we just no 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 we had to turn that off because it blew up our Prometheus server and start and uh, was was potentially leaking private information onto our into our through our public metrics. Uh, thankfully, we uh, we caught that uh, within like. A, uh, an hour of that feature getting turned on because, of course, it started to crush the Prometheus server. Uh, we got that turned off. We used the delete endpoint to get rid of all that data, and uh, thankfully, nobody on the public uh, knew that this was available, and, and I was able to delete all the data before it got queried. Um, uh, one other thing that we did, I think I missed that slide. There we go. Um, uh, one of the things that really helped was uh, we added a piece of software called Trickster. Uh, and uh, Trickster is a nice uh, Prometheus-specific caching server. So it it takes in, uh, uh, actually, I think Grafana fixed this a little bit, but before Grafana fixed this, uh, it would take your Prometheus queries and time align them to the nearest minute or five minutes or half an hour in order to make them more cacheable. Uh, and uh, it also takes and does some neat things. Uh, if you've, uh, Trickster does this thing where you query for an hour's worth of data, five minutes passed, and you query for the next uh, hour's worth of data, it knows that it's got this previous uh, 55 minutes of cached data and only sends a query for the next five minutes and fills the cache with that data. So it, it really improves the, the, the performance of, of, uh, of the dashboards over time. Uh, and yeah, it's super great. Uh, the The code was not so stable, uh, but you know, because it was open source, thanks Comcast, uh, uh, and they were super friendly, and we contributed a bunch of uh, upstream bug fixes to make it more stable and, and faster. Um, and back to here, uh, yeah. So continuing to try and improve efficiency. Uh, uh, I want to add the Thanos uh, storage engine, add the downsampling. Uh, that'll make things even faster for everybody. And then you'll be able to do super big queries uh, on our public dashboard without crushing uh, crushing our backends. Uh, and if you want to see it, dashboards.gitlab.com. It's there. Uh, it's awesome. Uh, it's super fun to be able to like share all of our public dashboards. So yeah, questions. Uh, where's our questions? Question Slack. Thank you. So, do you want to have a seat? Sure. Sitting down is good. Yeah. Why not? So there's a, a couple of questions on Grafana contract one. Um, first from Bartek. Where's Bartek? There he is. He asks, Do you have any tracking for what queries are used against Prometheus? Uh, yeah, we, we so uh, in order to prove that we didn't leak any information, uh, we have all the queries uh, all come in through uh, 
uh, Nginx and, and Grafana, so we, we have Nginx logs to see all of exactly what queries happen in the front end. Um, unfortunately, that's one of the things that we don't have in Prometheus is good query logging. I would, you know, it's it's been a long time complaint of mine that uh, we don't have good metrics on the the query engine for uh, queries, you know, samples and things, and and we don't have like the uh, MySQL equivalent of a slow query log. And this is something I'm hoping uh, we we can get to with uh, expanding our community. Thank you, um, Justin Wood. What made you decide on Thanos over Cortex? Um, for and, uh, and be yeah. nice, because I wrote Cortex. Yeah, no, I, I know. Uh, so so uh, Cortex is really, really great. Uh, when you're building uh, 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 Prometheus as a service, and uh, it works really, really well uh, when you need to like ship your data outside. And we, I, you know, I thought about do, I thought about using this, but um, for us, it was mostly uh, getting it integrated quickly and having a little bit less of a maintenance overhead. Where so Thanos, you just you run the query layer, and we we could increment on that. It's uh, so like you know we're, we're we're still not using the storage engine. We're just using the query layer uh, to provide a query proxy, uh, and that was really easy to deploy. Thank you, Ben. Uh, Mook asks. What cache store do you use for Trickster? Uh, I think we're just using in memory, uh, super basic in memory right now. Uh, do you mean the in process one in Trickster? Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, so, so Trickster, uh, to give some more background for Trickster, uh, Trickster has a bunch of different backends for storing. It has, uh, you can use Redis, uh, it has its own in memory caching, uh, it can store files on disk in its own format, and then it can use uh, uh, Bolt DB. And I, I had some. I we I tried the file thing. Uh, it works okay. Um, uh, the but it it spews a lot of files and it seems to not clean them up super well. Um, the Bolt DB works, but uh, it also seems to not garbage collect very well. And so the Bolt DB would grow and grow and grow, uh, and the Trickster would get slower and slower and slower until it would. Crash. Uh, I think there, and there's. I think there's still some improvement to like, I th like some Go routine leaks and some other problems with the code. We actually have a um, a system for doing exactly the same thing in Cortex. Yeah. For query results caching, that I would like to think, as I wrote it, is uh, a bit nicer. Probably. Uh, and probably. uses um, uses a memcache. Okay. And it can stitch different days worth of results. It can parallelize by day. Yeah, that would we, be that. Would, that sounds awesome. We've been talking to um, to Bartek and seeing how we can kind of share the code out of Cortex with. Uh, with, with the wider community, yeah, with Thanos, and and just run it on its own, just for Prometheus. Yeah, that would that would be great because yeah, the the you know Trickster was a is something that I kind of just threw in as a stopgap uh, to to prevent the the worst of the worst queries from from overloading. So this one's from me. One of the uh, criticisms that's been leveled at the Cortex architecture is that it's quite complicated. Like yeah. there are seven or eight moving parts, seven or eight different microservices that you need to deploy and configure. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's a fair criticism. But what are the th one of the things I find ironic is that whilst the initial Prometheus deployment is super simple, once you start bolting on things yeah. like Thanos, yeah. things like Trickster, yep. to what end do you an end up in the same kind of situation? Uh, yeah, and, and yeah, it is, it is like... You know, I, and I actually, I actually kind of like that about Prometheus in general. Is that uh, you can proof of concept super easily, and if you have a small infrastructure and small monitoring needs, it's super simple to run, uh, and it it doesn't. You don't have to. It's like. Uh, you know, people ask about like, well, how uh, have you tried the M3DB? And I'm like, uh, no, I haven't, because I looked at it and I said, wow, this is this would require like two of me to run just just to start it. Uh, versus Prometheus, you can just you just start it on my laptop and it works. Uh, so the complexity of operating a, a, a monitoring infrastructure grows as your infrastructure needs grow, and and yeah. So running Cortex and running Thanos, they they both have additional complexity. But I think that's I I think that's okay because. You know, at GitLab we started very small, and we had one Prometheus server, and then we had two for HA, and then we added an extra pair for uh, as our compl uh, as our complexity grew, our use of Prometheus grew. Yeah, I agree. I think that's something Thanos got really right. Yeah, um, making that incremental journey 
like much easier to get started and yeah. grow to the complexity. Yeah, and no, I, I would love to see like you know right now I'm and I have that same concern. I'm like, okay, so I'm going to run this storage layer on Thanos now. Is that actually going to be perform? You know, is that is that actually going to perform well enough uh, to to handle this public dashboard? I don't know. Like I haven't actually looked at like how well I can parallelize. And uh, you know, I was talking to uh, somebody the other day was. Um, okay, so you want to you're running Thanos. Uh, how do you scale it? Uh, how does the query processing model work with Thanos? And like, well, it just kind it just uses remote read, and all the actual query processing is handled in one binary. And I'm like, yeah, that's not going to work really well. Yeah. And so, you know, we need to, uh, uh, we need to be able to do distributed query evaluation and and I think that's <laughs> I, I so you know and I, and got, I, yeah. I I see these two like. Hmm, this sounds we've got to talk fun. From, yeah, we've got to talk from Bartek later about Thanos. And Bartek also lives in London, in the same place I live. And we, we meet up and talk about distributed queries quite regularly. Yeah, and, and I think that's going to be the next thing. Yeah, I agree. So uh, last question from Matt Persley. Um, are there limits to queries in your public dashboards? Yes. Uh, yeah, so how we, have you imposed those limits? Uh, uh, you can query for anything you want as long as it doesn't take too long. We limit, you know, we limit the query time, uh, we limit the parallelization, and we limit the number of samples that you can you can hit at a time. So uh, I don't care if you you scrape it and you do small incremental queries because it, it it makes no difference to me. It's just hitting my server and collecting the data. Like the, we put the data there publicly for the purpose of providing the public data, uh, and you know, like if you find something neat in our metrics, tell me. Um, I, and that, I think that's that's the next thing I need to do better uh, on the dash the public dashboard is right now when you go to dashboards.gitlab.com it just drops you into our overall triage dashboard and there's no like introduction page yeah and uh, like every month we get a, a a bug bounty security report saying your dashboards are public oh my <laughs> god I'm like yeah sorry that that's intentional I think I forget who implemented the query samples limit was it you Callum yeah. Yeah, it's awesome. It works so great. So we've got the got the guy who implemented it here. Cool. Okay, last question. Thank you very much, Ben. That was the last question, rather. <laughs> Cheers.